Hello and welcome to this video, which is a sort of half lifespan review, rather than a first look, which is my previous video, of the latest and current version of Ubuntu Studio, which is Ubuntu Studio 20.10 Groovy Gorilla. Now, unlike my last video, as you can see, this is actually full on 1080p HD. This is now actually properly installed onto my machine rather than being installed for a virtual machine like I did last time in my last video. As uh, before, I didn't want to have to uninstall my previous version of Ubuntu Studio, which was 20.04 LTS, as that was running XFCE, which I wanted to still keep using for a while. And I didn't fancy migrating all of my files and everything over just by that point. And I could have done the sensible thing. And actually the recommended thing, if we go on their site quickly, the recommended thing here, which says that they do not actually support direct upgrades from previous versions of Ubuntu Studio, but I thought I'd, you know, throw caution to the wind and try it anyway. And this is, in fact, that upgraded version. There are some problems, though. Problems to the point where I am actually going to have to reinstall the system, despite that being something I didn't want to do. I know some people enjoy doing a fresh install, but I prefer when I can to simply do, you know, distribution upgrades and just keep everything installed in the same place. I just, I just prefer that method. I find it a lot easier than having to, you know, make backups and migrate everything off and then migrate everything back on again. I just find that all to be a little bit of a headache, but I've caused a bit more of a headache for myself by doing this. So this is the KDE side of things, and on first glance, everything might seem like it's all, you know, going quite well, but there, there, there are some problems. I also still have XFC installed on here, and basically, uh, a big reason why they didn't recommend upgrading the same installation set to reinstall a new one is because there are loads of conflicts, and these aren't merely conflicts that it seems just affect the two desktop environments, uh, conflicts that actually seem to affect some more major packages. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm not going to log out and change into XFC in this video. Spoiler alert, I've actually been still using XFC a lot more than KDE, and that's sort of what, I, what I want to be using going forward. But let me just show you what I mean here. If I type in uh, Studio Apps Upgrade, you will see that there are lots of packages here that are now in the auto-remove. And obviously some of these, as I've been using this for quite a few months now, are like properly old versions of packages that I really do need to be getting rid of. However, a lot of these are things I don't want to be uninstalled. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll flash up on the screen an earlier screenshot of this so it'll probably have less stuff that really should be gone. Now, you see things on here like there are uh, things to do with XFCE that need to be uninstalled, and I don't want those to be uninstalled, uh, but I can understand why they would be put in there. But there are other things. For example, if you look, we have eSpeak here, which is a command line sort of text-to-speech program. And I, I was sitting looking at this thinking, why... Uh, packages like that in here to be uninstalled. I, I just just I have to call my eye here. I'm seeing you know Intel microcode and I thought to myself. Oh, I'm pretty sure a lot of this shouldn't be removed So I was looking into sort of how to try and remove things from the apt auto remove feature Now there, there was something I came across which was um, pseudo apt mark and I was looking into it and I thought a lot of these packages I'm not overly familiar with as you know I couldn't code my way out of a cardboard box I don't actually know which of these components are vital and which of these are, you know, old packages that aren't required. So, I went to the well of knowledge I normally go to, which is Ask Ubuntu. Which, if you're not aware, it's a really, really useful website where you can go and ask questions or look up previously asked questions about sort of general things to do with Ubuntu, but mostly it seems to be problems people are having. Well, I, I, I brought this up and uh, sort of in no uncertain terms, I got, I got RTFM which is a, uh, if you're not too sure, it's like a Linux term for uh, read the effing manual. Now, that word wasn't exactly said, and to be fair, the people who replied to me did actually say a solution that would fix it. They simply said, I will have to reinstall, which it looks like I'm going to have to do. But what I was asking is how to remove these packages and which ones do need removing and which ones I can, you know, it's be safe to uninstall as I wanted to learn how to how to be able to like fix my own system and maintain my own system without always having to like cut and run and reinstall. Because you see in, in like a lot of um, Linux rhetoric talks about how you know you don't have to do reinstallations all the time like you like they say you have to do with Windows just to get things to work but I wanted to you know follow that mantra in the sense of rather than thinking arms oh, reinstall I'm thinking well it's all open source I'll fix my own system but uh, the advice I got has been just to do what the developers have suggested, follow their instructions. I took that to be a basically a more polite way of saying RTFM. So it seems that 
as I have a semi-messed up installation here, it's, it's still working, it still has been working, but as you can see, there are some problems here. I'm going to reinstall. I know there's probably going to be someone who's going to be super, super, super useful in the comments section who probably will look at this and actually will know the answer. And uh, I applaud you actually to put the answer in the comments if you do see it, as it'll really help. But by the time this goes out, I probably will have done a reinstallation. Uh, but just, just for future reference, I would actually like to know how to be able to remove things from the app to auto remove and uh, to know if any of these particular things are critical. But with those unpleasantries out of the way, let's get more into the actual review of the distribution itself. So, as previously mentioned in my, in my first look video, the big, big, big update and the big change to Ubuntu Studio going from 20.04 LTS to 20.10 is the migration over from the XFC desktop environment to the KDE Plasma desktop environment. And that's now what you're looking at here. Now, KDE is one of the most popular and one of the most feature-rich and one of the strongest desktop environments you can find. And uh, as you can see, it looks it looks pretty snazzy. Now, what I've got here is the default sort of out-of-the-box Ubuntu Studio style. And it's actually based on the configuration they had for XFC in the previous releases of the distribution. But they've sort of recreated it over on KDE here. In fact, there's only one little change I've made. And that's actually, and this is one of the things I really love about this, is they previously had the, well, for lack of a better term, the start menu. It was previously a more, you know, traditional one where it'd open up with lists and, like, buttons on here. But actually, when I click this now, we get the, you know, the full screen thing. And if I go on all applications, we can get everything on here. This whole full screen program application draw, whatever you like to call it, I first came across stuff like this on GNOME. And I absolutely loved it. And I've, I've tried to recreate it on over on XFC to, to a pretty, I think, a pretty good effect, actually. But, man, no desktop environment does it as well as KDE. Look at this. This looks absolutely gorgeous. If I could port this over to, like, XFC or anything, I'd be a happy man. This is the measuring stick that I think all other, you know, full-screen app launchers should be measured by. I think the fact that it blurs the background, you have, like, a favorite selection on the side, you have your controls down here, you've got different categories on the side here. It's very smooth. There's no, like, juttering. Everything's clearly laid out alphabetically, and the fact you can easily have a search feature at the top, it's just brilliant. And I'm, I'm happy of how I've had things on XFC, and GNOME does it very well, but just this is just a whole nother level. It looks brilliant. This is, this is a killer feature for me over on KDE. So aside from that change here, it's a very typical KDE sort of setup, but apart from, I think, in certain versions of KDE, like I think Kubuntu, they have the panel at the bottom, so it's a little bit more Windowsy. Ubuntu Studio likes to have it at the top, but it essentially functions the same way. You can go through your programs, stuff like that. Now, as anyone who has watched my previous Ubuntu Studio videos might be able to remember, I don't actually tend to use the default layout for Ubuntu Studio. And actually, I've tried to replicate the experience I have on XFC over on uh, KDE Plasma here, but I was just never completely satisfied with it. Despite its heavy customizability, I simply haven't been able to just click with KD Plasma the same way I have with XFCE. So regardless of how good KDE is, and it is a brilliant desktop environment, uh, I'm actually gonna be switching back over to XFCE after this. I gave it a good go. It is a, it is a smashing desktop environment, but there are certain features when I'm trying to customize things where I just can't get it to quite be the same as how I like it to be. And even though in, well, in, in, in recent tests, KD has slimmed down loads, even to the point where in some cases it's, it's proven to be slightly lightweight than XFC, there's just something that feels a little bit more sluggish about it compared to XFC. And I, I love the snappiness of XFC and how like, quick it is to open and close things. That said, though, being able to open and close things with lovely animations on uh, KD, something I really, really like. There's like a few things in KDE I really, really want to have in XFC. I feel like my ultimate desktop environment would actually be a system that's somehow an amalgamation of the two. And so it was it was a difficult decision to come to, but I think I'm going to be going with XFC. So, uh, actually for my next installation, I'm going to be practicing what I've preached in previous videos. And that is by using the Ubuntu Studio installer. So... With this, what you can do is you can install a different flavor of Ubuntu. So if I go on to Ubuntu Flavors here, this is on Ubuntu's actual website run by Canonical. Uh, you can see there are multiple different uh, variations of Ubuntu, mostly just different desktop environments. So what I'll be doing is I'll be installing Zubuntu or Xubuntu, which is uh, just normal Ubuntu. So like generic Ubuntu rather than being like studio ready Ubuntu like Ubuntu Studio is. But with the XFC desktop environment... This is actually the version of Ubuntu that Ubuntu Studio was based upon in previous years. Now it's based on Kubuntu, the one of KDE. 
So I'll be installing the Ubuntu Studio installer on it and basically converting it over to being an Ubuntu Studio installation, but with XFCE. That said though, I do completely understand why the developers have switched things over to KDE. As, well, as I said, in certain tests it's proven to be even lighter weight. And I think they must have um, asked the community and I think the developers even decided that, it, that more people seem to prefer using it. So it makes sense. Use the thing that most people prefer to use and, you know, are actually going to use. Even though I'd be, I'd be a very, very happy man if they did make a second installation similar to what Linux Mint do where they actually offer different desktop environments sort of out of the box. However, I do understand why they don't do this as a lot of effort has to go into making a completely packaged distribution. So that's no problem. I'll just be using XFC from Ubuntu and converting it into Ubuntu Studio. So I'm by no means ditching Ubuntu Studio. Absolutely not. It is still my distribution of choice. I'm just going to be installing it a little bit of a different way. And for future videos, I think I'll be doing first look videos of probably in like a virtual machine, which I'll try and make work better than I did last time, using the actual release by Ubuntu Studio KD Plasma versions. And then for my reviews, where I talk about what I've actually been using, I'll be probably using the XFC version, which is the one I'll be using myself. So with all that desktop environment talk out of the way, let's dive into looking at a couple of the programs that come installed in this particular version of uh, Ubuntu Studio. And actually, uh, despite simply the desktop environment changing, there are actually quite a few interesting extra programs that have been pre-installed in this version. And the first one is Eliza, Elisa, Eliza. This is the new standard music library manager, music player that's come with uh, KDE Plasma. I think before they used to use Amarok, Amarok, however it's pronounced, which is actually what Clementine's based upon. And I actually haven't got my library synced up with this version on this particular install at the moment. But it's been, I think it's been a strange thing that for so long, Ubuntu Studio, the distribution of Ubuntu that is built for creatives and, let's face it, a heavy amount of their sort of like prerogative and, and aim with Ubuntu Studio is for musicians, like professional musicians, recording artists, producers, stuff like that. I've always thought it's weird that there's no music player pre-installed, and so it's nice to finally have one, and Eliza is, is really quite cool actually. I'm, I'm, I'm planning very soon actually to start doing video reviews of different music players, like, you know, iTunes, Clementine, Eliza, stuff like that. And this is going to be quite high on the list of ones to do because I think it's really cool and I think it's been a long time coming for them to actually include one out of the box in the install. The next thing I want to talk about is the inclusion of a hell of a lot of new musical plugins. Um, I've actually been using Ardor on Ubuntu Studio a lot more recently, but in the last like month or two, I haven't had a huge amount of time to really test it out. So I haven't, I haven't had a chance to test these out properly yet. This is just the spectrum analyzer I've got on here. And as you can see, it's not actually connected to what I'm recording through at the moment. But you can use this with stuff like uh, LMMS or Ardor. Possibly Reaper, I'm not too sure, it depends. As I think Reaper has just added support for, it's either LV2 or Ladsper plugins now. So maybe you could use it for that as well. We'll have to find out. But this is just one of them. If I go into the uh, very, very stylish application launcher here and just type in LSP, you can see the sheer just wall of so many plugins. Like, bloody hell, there's a lot of plugins here. There were quite a lot of plugins before in Ubuntu Studio, but this this is this has gotten really, really crazy now. And I think I actually remember listening to what was, it, it might have been the Ubuntu podcast, or I was like reading it somewhere. It's something to do with the people who, you know, maintain mainline Ubuntu, always talking about, you know, what, what packages get brought up by the other flavors, you know, Kubuntu, Ubuntu, Lubuntu, Ubuntu Studio, Ubuntu Mate, things like that. And they, I think they, they jokingly always say, well, Ubuntu Studio will always just add a load of new audio plugins, and uh, yeah, well, no, they most certainly do. The only, if I'm going to really nitpick here, the only downside I could really say is the fact that um, it actually makes app drawers like this a bit clogged. You know, if I, if I come out here and go into all applications, there's just loads of, like, LSP everywhere as we scroll down, you just get, yeah, just a wall of them here or there. Something cool that Ubuntu Studio have done compared to other Ubuntu-based distributions is they've always made these extra little categories of audio production, graphic design, video production. I'm wondering if there's a way of trying to package all of these up so they just take up like a single space in the menu, but maybe that's not really possible. Like I said, I'm nitpicking here. The fact that all of these are now included in here is just so cool and just adds to the to the already large toolbox that you have with Ubuntu Studio. Because I've spoken before about how it's it's like a toolbox that you can just go to that has everything a creative would need. But of course, creatives aren't just uh, musicians. Uh, one other big thing that's been brought up in this particular version of the distribution is Digicam, which I believe is a, a KDE program 
it's for photography it's for i think editing pictures or managing pictures or anything as you can probably tell by how i'm talking here uh, i'm not a photographer myself i haven't really used it the most amount of photography i do is taking the occasional picture on my phone of like cool things i might see out and about so if you're a photographer then I hope this is very useful for you, and in fact, if you are, you might want to consider making a video on it yourself to fill in the blanks that I just can't tell you because I just don't know, but this looks really, really professional. But then that said, it's made by KDE, the same people that make KDE Live, which is the video editing software that comes pre-installed on here, and is also my personal video editor of choice. And one last piece of software I just want to look at is a Cyril, I think is how it's pronounced. And I brought this up before as I got very excited when I saw it. It is astronomy software and uh, I thought it was going to be, you know, like a sort of like a planetarium style thing. It seems to be more for importing images you might take through telescopes and uh, editing them from there. And I'm afraid I haven't had a chance to use it as unfortunately I don't own a telescope. But actually I've wanted to own a telescope for a long time and this is sort of prompting me to maybe, you know, want to go out and buy myself a telescope so I can try and look at some of the planets and then maybe take some photos and put it through the software and see what I can do with it. It's just on an off topic. If you never have, but if you ever do get the opportunity to look through a telescope to see another planet, it's it is really an amazing sight. And I think it's something that everyone should try and do once in their life if they can. You know, it's going to be like a small telescope, so it's not going to look as impressive as like some of the pictures that, you know, the Hubble telescope has taken. But to look down a lens yourself and to see with your own eye another world, it's, it's really it's quite a breathtaking thing. And uh, yeah, it's probably going to be even more breathtaking if you can take pictures of that yourself and put it through your computer and actually have some proper software. So I, I assume it's for things like, you know, getting rid of things like glare, editing out certain things as, you know, taking taking pictures of things from outer space. When you're on the planet, you have to see everything through the atmosphere and that can add a lot of noise and a lot of, like, you know, distortion to the picture. The other things like that, just, just, to, just to clean the picture up a little bit. But yeah, the fact this is included is really, really cool. So I think that about wraps it up. Uh, Ubuntu Studio 20.10 is a, a really good distribution. Regardless of the problems I've had, as you know, these problems have not been recommended. And I I can now tell you, as someone who did stupidly do the upgrade from uh, 20.04 to 20.10 on the same installation, that you probably shouldn't do it. That said, though, if you do want to use this particular distribution, uh, then you have the choice of downloading 20.04 LTS, which is the XFC version, one you shouldn't upgrade immediately from. Or, if you want to, you know, get the latest version, which you can then upgrade, hopefully, from then on, with a KDE Plasma, you should get the 20.10 edition. If you're interested in trying it, but you don't want to install it, then uh, you can just download it and try it in either a virtual machine, or download it and try it as, like, a live CD, where you would plug it into your computer, boot from it, but not install it. Things like this and, like, the virtual machine, they never tend to be as quick or as snappy as actually installing it, so you have to take the performance with a pinch of salt, but it allows you to, you know, test things out, see what you like, see what you don't like. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this video useful. Of course, there will be a video on 21.04 when that comes out. But as well as that, I do plenty of other videos on my channel, mostly about music. If you enjoyed this, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. And I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.